Hello, what you're about to watch is an edited version of a live stream that I did uh, almost a month ago. It was, uh, this was actually the sixth time that I've done that. It was the end of semester ITP and IMA Spring Show 2019. So I teach uh, here at a program called ITP, that's a two-year master's program, and also IMA, or Interactive Media Arts, that's an undergraduate major at Tisch School of the Arts, New York University. At the end of every semester, all the students get together and do a show, two nights only, of their work. So I wandered around with a camera, and a bunch of people helped me, and it was lots of fun, and had a microphone, and looked at various projects. You can watch the full live stream, it's a little over two hours, if you want to check this video's description, or enjoy this highlight reel, and a happy summer, have a wonderful summer, and see you in some future Coding Train videos. <laughs> Can we see the dinosaur project? Can the dinosaur explain the dinosaur project? I'm Emily. I'm Maya Pruitt. Dylan the dino. <laughs> Dylan the dino. And we have another group mate, Mina. Yes. Um, so we part for this piece, we partnered with Dr. Michael Rampino, who's a geologist and also a researcher at NYU. Um, and he specifically studies mass extinction, so we made an AR app where people are invited to become a geologist by scanning the rock layers for evidence of um, mass extinction and more information about Earth's history. This is your tool, and if you find an object, you can scan it and an AR component will appear. So this one's one of our favorites. We call him Ancestor Shrew because he is the ancestor of all placental mammals. I'm Chen He and this is Yves. Um, and I'm Eve. And uh, this is a project. Um, we did this, we call it uh, White Mountain Black Water. This is uh, simply you drop down the water and uh, make a song. This is the most magical thing ever. What is the substance that you're that's uh, that, That's, that's uh, water, ink water. Ink water, okay. Yeah, just ink and water. But the surface, like this is like, a, a, like an acrylic sheet and then we painted it with um, like water resistance spray. So that's why the water is behaving like that. How do you do the sensing? That's the camera. The camera. <laughs> yeah. My name is Yi Yao, and this is my thesis project called Life in a Nutshell. There is two parts. The first part is a series of sculptures. They have 13, uh, from birth to death as a cycle. And the second part is an interactive installation. People can interact with it, and they need to make a pose exactly like what the sculpture shows, and then they will become part of the character to experience different stages of life. I'm Bora Aydintu. This is feedback mirror made in processing. It's using using the letter I to visualize the camera image, but it's also measuring the overall image to create some sort of feedback. There are two different angles. Um, one is the angle that's mapped to the brightness of the camera image. The other one is the brightness data of the overall image. So if the elements started touching each other, they start doing these recursive patterns. Um, it's called I Can't Breathe. It's a homage piece to Eric Garner's last words in the documentation of how he died. Um, it's a data visualization piece of uh, black deaths at the hand of police brutality. So um, essentially what happens is the screen goes through the days of a calendar year and on a day where there were no documented deaths of black lives, the lungs breathe gently. And on a day where, um, as we're witnessing right now, somebody, somebody lost their life, a person of color lost their life to the hand of an officer, the calendar pauses, um, the lungs completely deflate and shrivel and crunch, and then very, very slowly reinflate before the calendar moves to the next day. And that continues over the course of, in this iteration, one month, accounting for 27 deaths, but I actually have a data set that accounts for every day between now moving backwards to January 2013, which is a cumulative of 1,742 deaths, 80% of which have had no judicial investigation and 73% which were unarmed. So um, my next iteration hopefully will account for like that entire data set, um, but it takes two hours just to witness January 2018 alone, so um, that's what I have today, yeah. Hi, my name is Jim Schmitz, and this is my project, it's my thesis project at ITP. 
my thesis is about um, applying a style transfer to, uh, to 360 imagery. So a style transfer is a computational technique where you can reimagine a photograph in the style of a painting. And I, using images from Google Street View, I'm able to create art that um, forms uh, a connection with, with, that inspires the viewer to, uh, to connect with the actual locations. But the, the neat thing about this is that the style is, is even and continuous, and there are no seams, which is different from the way that other style transfers end up when, you, when they're applied to 360 imagery. My name is Stefan, Stefan Skirpak. So what you're looking at is a USB device that is um, connected that uh, reacts to your um, browser usage, your internet usage. So if you visit a bandwidth heavy website, it will switch from what it's in now, which is cooling mode, which is actually uh, cooling the inside to heating. And, uh, and when you, what's in here is actually a, an iceberg shaped ice cube. And so when you switch to heating mode, it like uh, dramatically increases the speed at which the iceberg melts. And, uh, and once enough of it has melted, it will actually trigger a simulated short circuit, um, which leads to uh, all the monitors shutting off and prevents you from using the device any further. Hi, uh, my name is Yang, and I'm a second year student. I'm graduating, and this is my thesis project. It's called the Magical Pencil. So I, the idea is uh, whatever you draw in this game becomes real. So you don't need to find an item when you need it. Whenever you need something, you just draw it. Yeah, you can use it to solve puzzles on your journey. So, let's see, like, you can drive, you can drive a van. Yeah, let's drive. Yeah. So, keep going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My name's Lauren Reyes. I'm a designer, and I use participatory design with five uh, low vision and blind designers and makers to convert all the material that's used to teach physical computing at ITP to tactile. So these are the original symbols from the PCOM site. Um, I printed them out and I ran them through what's called a swell form machine, which reacts to carbon and black ink, causing it to puff up. And then this is the 11th iteration of each symbol using participatory design. What happened after that was it became like a funnel. So if somebody needed a schematic that was tactile, they'd come to me. And I realized I was the only one making them. So what I did was I created a style guide with templates. So teachers and students and uh, designers can come in and use the templates to make their own tactile schematic. So my name is Tiani, um, and this is a project for a team of three. Um, Helen and Chen Han, they're also um, in this project. And we're making a music box for our children, specifically aged from four to six. Um, and we just want to um, deliver a very playful experience to encourage them to be more interested with music making and also maybe become DJ or composer um, when they're young. My name is Ada. This project is called Sonic Cubes. Um, this is a, an instrument, a set of instruments I made for uh, a final performance I did for this class, Sound and Space, using 17 speaker, uh, 17 speaker setup. My name is Kemi, Adekemi Sijiwade. Um, I'm, I have a multimodal thumb piano that you can play in the browser live several ways. It uses facial recognition to um, allow you to play. And then the other way of playing it is through the touch screen. My name is Billy Bennett and I have uh, a P5 sketch with some particles, which you may recognize from the Nature of Code series. <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, I rigged up this musical wand to play uh, music as you swing it across 
music of uh, Hailu Merja, who's an Ethiopian jazz artist. And he has this kind of rolling right hand style in his music that I tried to mimic with this wand so you don't skip any notes, you know. I'm Ella, nice to meet you guys. So I'm graduating this year and this is my thesis project which is called Breath Relief. And this is a breathing meditation for one to two person in a very dark and immersive studio. So the purpose of this is to allow people to practice their breathing meditation and how this breathing as a primary note is linked to nature and environment that we always notice that our breathing is part of the nature, but we don't see it right away. So I want to use breathing as a part of way to allow people to understand their breathing meditation activity and also understand that the small changes of breathing is affecting the environment very uh, in a very more impactful way. I am Casey Conchina and uh, this is P5JS Shaders. I worked on it with my partner Luisa Lessel and it's essentially a collection of examples of shaders in P5 that are basically and a guide uh, to basically show people what they can do with shaders in P5 why they'd want to use shaders in P5 versus your load pixels uh, function. And I have them all running in my browser and it's not slowing down at all. So they're very performative, which is one of the main reasons why you'd want to use them. My name is Anna, I'm a first year. And then my project is apron video controller. Because when I'm cooking, I'm usually watching a YouTube video, but I don't want to touch my iPad with my greasy hand. So if I'm wearing this apron, I don't need to touch it. I can control video with this apron. Playing the video and then pause, playing whatever I want. And then if I miss some part, I can go back, backward. And also I can control the volume like a zipper, like a louder and then like quieter. Hi everybody, I'm Elizabeth. And I worked on a project where I looked for people in the Library of Congress um, who uh, are featured in the New York Times' overlooked obituary feature. So I um, put together a data set um, of these 16 people who are about half the people who have been recently given obituaries only for the first time. So some people, you might be surprised that they didn't receive an obituary at the time they died. So um, the questions down here correspond to the buttons that you can press to find out, like, are they in the Library of Congress at all? Um, do they have a name authority file? Do they have a subject heading? Hi, everyone. My name is Chelsea Chen. This is my project I call it Know You're in the Conversation. The reason why I made it is because I'm so tired about people taking photos in museums and exhibitions. Sometimes they really don't care about the artwork itself. The only one to post on Instagram. So I made a very Instagrammable piece, and when you try to take a photo of it, it stops. So it stops. And it's when you put your I'm James um, Hoskin. This is 100 Days of Spaceships. The, the class was 100 Days of Making, which uh, was about iterating on a theme. So for 100 days, each day you have to make something new. Um, and part of the class is about trying to break free from the chains of perfectionism. It doesn't matter if it's good or not, you just have to post it. Um, and another part of the class was posting it publicly. Um, so this was all on Instagram and each of these posters represents two days of uh, spaceship making. The first day was modeling a spaceship and then the second was uh, animating the spaceship. My name is Sukanya and this is a collaboration with Nick who is run away right now. Um, so it's a project for valence. It's essentially a router and the router leaks liquid as data is leaking to bodies as you browse the internet. We go to BuzzFeed for example. Um, so these are the sort of domains it's hitting which are not BuzzFeed. These are third parties and as you can see there's like this liquid that starts running. Um, but it's basically just to shed light on the fact that there's this whole industry going around on surveillance for profit and sort of tracking your behavior online and creating these profiles of you. This is a location tracking slash surveillance project. Um, the goal is to identify devices and see where they are on the floor. Um, 
So what we're doing is we're basically scanning the NYU Wi-Fi and looking at different access points and seeing who's connected to which access point. And if we know who's connected to which access point, we kind of know in that radius where the devices are located. Um, we used uh, a monitor mode wireless adapter with huge antennas and, and a thing called Aircrack. It's an open source software which runs on a Linux machine, which is used for penetration testing. My name is Xu Guang, and uh, my project is called CATS. Uh, it is my experiment on generate a film completely using AI. And this is like the very, very first step of doing that. So uh, what you're seeing now is uh, my first experiment on using a uh, neural network to combine uh, human portraits with different things that are ubiquitous in our lives. So what you see at the top is includes uh, human portrait mixed with cats, bitmojis, donuts, power outlet, and rib jeans. And the video is uh, showing how uh, we could do animations for uh, cat and human portrait mixtures. Oh, I'm G1. I'm Anna. Um, this is a, a small zine that we made about an introduction to surveillance technologies. Um, it's basically for the general audience, so anyone can understand it. Basically going through something as simple as like a Google search. So what happens in the internet ecosystem when you type something in Google and how basically the internet works and then also the repercussions of it, like how you can be tracked, um, what cookies are, and basically just being more aware about your privacy on the internet. Uh, my name is Jackie Liu and I created a project called ENIAC Girls Program and Pretend. Um, so what it is is a speculative playset for girls to get them interested in programming. Um, but the playset also references the history of inequality surrounding women in computing. The toy is meant to like evoke the um, the motions of being a programmer and the first uh, electronic computer, the ENIAC. Basically, what this is is um, so as you may or may not know, World Pride is happening at the end of June, and it is for the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall riots. Um, basically, that was like a, a huge, um, start. it was a little bar fight, or very famous, um, thing that happened um, that basically launched the, the gay civil rights, LGBT civil rights movement in New York. The arch uh, in Washington Square Park was built in 1892 um, for the commemoration of President Washington. And um, basically it was there to celebrate the founding fathers, right, on the centennial anniversary of his inauguration. So on the half centennial anniversary of um, the LGBT civil rights uh, start, what better way than to commemorate the um, founding mothers and fathers of, of the movement? Uh, my name is Veronica Alfaro. Uh, I'm Adrian Bautista. I'm Jing Yiwen. And we still have two other group members. Well, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be joining the CRISPR detective unit today. Um, your goal is to find members of the metastasis mafia. These are the genes that cause cancer cells to metastasize and spread throughout the body. So welcome to your first mission. This is the pre-CRISPR era, where genetic research was a little bit cumbersome, not always accurate, not always the most efficient. Um, so to illustrate that point, what you're going to be doing here is using your sense of touch. You're going to be trying to find the bad genes, the ones that cause metastasis. And as you can see, it's a little cumbersome, it's a little frustrating, and that's what editing DNA was like pre-CRISPR. It wasn't, wasn't always the best. So detectives, welcome to back to now, and now you have the help of CRISPR technology, and your job will be much easier and much faster. Mm -hmm.